Hey everyone, we're into capability number two for new era leaders this week. So uh, last last episode we talked about dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity and raising your tolerance, raising your threshold for dealing with that. Uh, this week, this episode, real quick conversation about personal resilience. So anybody who works in this change space, anyone who is in a leadership space, um, I think, you know, to be honest, I think it's one of those pervasive human things. We we all know that resilience is something that we need to keep an eye on. I think it's become particularly apt given our current climate. And um, and resilience is, like, it's interesting, right? I When I was first taught these concepts, you know, there was a lot of talk about building yourself up and making yourself strong. And, and resilience was, it was like being able to put up this shield wall, uh, and and kind of keep moving and and you know nothing could get you down and um, I certainly used that definition of resilience for a long time uh, and then as I've sort of grown and evolved and got deeper into it I think I've realized that um, you know there's this other side to it and so now what I teach when I talk about resilience um, I teach the two sides of the coin and it, resilience is so important because I think you know when you're in this change space, we, myself certainly, um, and a lot of the leaders that I work with, you know, often we'll come into a new role or we come into a new initiative and we've got all of this energy and this excitement and this passion for learning and we're going to make change and we can see the vision. And, you know, a lot of us get into this work because we can see the possibility and we get excited by that. Yeah, we're optimistic. We, like we can see the cha- we can see the size of the opportunity. That's part of why we get out of bed in the morning, right? It's the size of the dollar figures. It's the the scale of stuff, and to see that opportunity and to think how great could this be if we could shift it just a little bit, but but seeing the size of the opportunity within our organisations. And so I think a lot of us come into it with all this passion and all this gusto, right? And then six months on, we've started down this path and all of a sudden you know change fatigue sets in because it feels like stuff's moving all the time we're never making any progress people are whinging and moaning all over the place and and all all of a sudden you start carrying that weight personally around change and this stuff's hard like as human beings, we love certainty, we love familiarity, and yet here we are as corporate hippies and Trojan horses, stepping into the space going, nope, we're going to disrupt, we're going to change stuff, and I think sometimes that energy, you know, we can only keep it up for so long, right, and then we sort of fall into this mode of fighting through and pushing through, and, and we armor up, and we put a shield on, we, we push hard, right, and um, I think we need to be really conscious of that, because Resilience has two sides to the coin. So the other, the flip side to staying strong and pushing through is that actually we've got to put gas back in the tank. And I think there's a lot less talk about this aspect of putting gas back in the tank. Um, There's an HBR article that I read a long time ago and I love, and I repeat the story over and over again. And it was an example of someone talking to a survivor of a prisoner of war camp. And um, this person was asked, who makes it through? So, you know, and, and the response was not what was expected. So the answer that this person had expected was, it, it's the optimists. But in actual fact, the survivor had said to the interviewee, well, it's not actually the optimists that make it through. They go first. Because the optimists have this blind faith that it'll be tomorrow, we'll be out next week, we'll be out in a couple of days. And at some point, that optimism wears thin. And once they they lose that, then people die of broken hearts. Um, And so the people that actually make it through are the people that have not optimism, but a very clear understanding of the situation that they're in. Full visibility, full honesty with themselves about the situation that they find themselves in. You know, pulling no punches. And yet maintain that absolute unwavering faith that we will get through this. And that we will make it to the other side. No matter what it takes, we'll make it to the other side. And then there's this ingenuity that comes along with that, right? Around self-renewal and about 
being able to continue to take those steps every day, even if they're the little steps. And I think it's a really powerful lesson for that, um, for all of us in that, in the, particularly in today's environment where there's no more silver bullets. This is not, this is not a one hit wonder. We don't get to do a thing and then it's, it's finished. Um, and we have this revolution and all of a sudden our organization is fixed. What we're stepping into, make no mistake, is that slow, incremental, small change, those little things every day that build that constant momentum and build that ongoing shift. That's the game that we're really playing. And so I take a lot from that example around, um, you know, that that sense of blind optimism is, is almost the way that I see many of us think about resilience of simply pushing through, staying strong, keep going. You can only maintain that for so long. There is that point we need to put back gas back in the tank. We need to renew that faith in ourselves that we'll get through this, and it might not be life and death, but that we will get through what it is that we're doing and we will make it to that to that flag on the hill that we've placed around where we want our organisation to be and, and how to build that responsiveness and so two sides of the coin right yes there's an element of staying strong absolutely there is an element of taking on that burden you know carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders and continuing to step forward there's absolutely that element but the element that we're not talking about enough is the flip side of the coin around how do you put gas back in your tank what does that look like for you in terms of self-renewal, in terms of giving yourself space for rest and digestion, the, the space to reflect, the opportunity to pause, the opportunity to say, it's actually not my responsibility and I need to allow that ball to drop gracefully or otherwise. It's not my thing. And so that, that question about how do you put gas back in the tank and, um, and one of my teachers has this beautiful quote, which I love, which is, this, it's the sense of, in order to make progress, yes, we have to move forward, but we, in as much as we need that strength to keep walking, to keep stepping forward, to keep pushing forward, we also need that grace and that openness to be able to receive it coming. Otherwise, we won't miss it. And so that's my message for you today around personal resilience, is not only that strength to pull through, but that conversation with yourself about what are the things that renew and put gas back in my own tank and, and focusing on those as well. Because yes, we can all push through and we can stay strong, but that's a bit of an anti-pattern when we're talking about resilience. So it's not the only conversation. The other anti-pattern that we want to be aware of is that when we put ourselves into that mode of continuing to push forward, what actually happens is we start to armor up and we lose that ability to be vulnerable with others. We lose that ability to retain that softness and the strength and we lose that ability to be able to receive it coming to us. And so it blinkers our ability to see the opportunity that's coming at us because we get so focused on pushing through. So that's the interplay with personal resilience. This one's a fine line. This one's about walking walking a bit of a tightrope, and about having strategies on both sides of that coin. So yeah, I might leave it with that and leave you with that today. Uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day, and I will see you again next week.